who do you think knows more about marketing than me? Or even more about marketing than other marketers? Sure, people like me and other marketers, we know a lot of information, but there's someone who has a lot of inside information. Hey everyone, I'm Neil Patel, and today I'm gonna share seven marketing lessons I learned from a Google employee. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you're on YouTube, click the alert notification. That way when I go live, you'll get notified. The first lesson I learned was to research new markets. I always created content in the English market until a Google employee told me that I should create content in German, French, Portuguese, Hindi. These are all regions where they lack content. Sure, in English, it's a competitive space, but SEO in a lot of these regions, even though they're still competitive markets, they're nowhere near as hard as to rank in the English markets. So look at your customer base, look at where they are, consider translating and transcribing your content. That was the first lesson I learned. In other words, expand globally. You can get so much more search traffic just from that one thing. The second lesson I learned is expanding globally doesn't guarantee traffic. I used to, when I first did this, I would just translate all my content. I quickly learned from this employee that I need to transcribe my content, adjust it to that market. You need to do keyword research. That's why tools like Uber suggest we have keyword advice for every single country in different languages because it's different in every single region. So use it to understand what people are looking for and then adjust your content, translate and transcribe it from there. What I found is if you create bad translated content and you place it up, and when you do this, it can actually hurt your rankings for all your whole site, all your languages, because if your user metrics, like your click-through rates, your bounce rates are terrible, what'll happen is your English site will start ranking lower and lower as well. Hence, you need to transcribe your content and make it super relevant or else your whole site gets hurt. The third lesson that I learned, payment plans are a great way to make money. Now, in most English markets, we look at payment plans as, hey, people are paying us money and there's a good chance they're not gonna do all six payments, 12 payments, whatever the number you're charging them, there's a lot of drop off, you lose cash. What they ended up telling me, and I learned this from this is really wise, in some regions, the credit card companies and banks offer payment plans. So in Brazil, for example, when you do a 12 pay, the credit card companies may charge you 6%, but they guarantee that you're gonna get all 12 payments and they even give you the money upfront and they collect it from their end users each and every single month. If they don't pay, you still get your money up front. You don't have to give anything back to the credit card companies. So in certain regions, you can do things like payment plans. Sure, in the United States, payment plans aren't as lucrative, but in other countries, payment plans are amazing because when someone subscribes to a payment plan, they actually have to continue with every single payment. Just like if you bought a car in the United States, you need to make your monthly payments so the car is gonna get repossessed. So look at the different payment plans that different companies offer, and that'll give you ideas on which regions you can make the maximum amount of money for, because by reducing the upfront cost and having payment plans, you should be able to drive in many more sales. The fourth lesson that I learned is by being omni-channel, your CPAs go down. A lot of us use things like SEO, pay-per-click, and we stop there. You may even use Facebook ads, you may even use radio ads, television ads, billboard ads, but what I found is when you leverage them all at the same time, your CPAs go down. A good example of this is when I was working with Expedia, they ended up showcasing how when they were using multiple channels for advertising and marketing, in other words, omni-channel, their CPAs across the board went down, their advertising became much more affordable. Everyone's already familiar with the brand Expedia, and they did this when their brand was already established. It was a little simple thing, but that made a huge difference. So with your marketing, consider going omni-channel because even if some of these other channels don't produce as good results, by leveraging them all at the same time, your overall cost for each of the channels should go down. The fifth lesson I learned from a Google employee, old is new. We all try to keep creating new content, I used to do that where I used to create one blog post a day, but now I just write one blog post a week, but I update 90 blog posts a month. I have a team of three people, all they do is update my old content. Lesson I learned from this employee, Google loves fresh content more than old outdated content. Hence, a lot of times you'll see 
new content getting pushed out there and you rank higher at Google in the short run and then it goes down, which is normal. And there could be a wide variety of reasons for why, but in general, when you update your old outdated content, create a better user experience, expand upon the content, make it way better from, remove the dead links, all that stuff sends signals to Google that, hey, we should rank this old content higher and higher. If you don't do that, what you'll find in many cases, your old content keeps dwindling down and your rankings go lower and lower. The sixth tip, branding is everything. Eric Schmidt once had a quote and he talked about how brands are the solution. And what Eric Schmidt was saying is, hey, look, when you're trying to figure out what sites are good versus bad, look for the brands, it's an indicator. You already know that Nike is Nike or CNN is CNN or BBC is BBC. You can trust those brands. Big brands are very unlikely to do anything that can jeopardize their brand for a quick buck. Small companies are more likely to do something to jeopardize a brand to make a quick buck because, hey, let's face it, they don't really have a brand. So the bigger the brand you build, the higher your rankings. And Google's looking for things like, how many brand queries are you getting on a monthly basis? The more you get, the better off you are. So how do you improve your brand queries? Well, it's a rule of seven. When someone sees your brand and interacts with it seven times, they're much more likely to keep coming back and remembering your brand. So a simple way, collect emails and send out email blasts every time you have updates or new blog posts. Make sure you go out there and leverage push notifications. There's tools like subscribers.com where people come to your site, they can subscribe. You can keep pushing them to get them to come back every time you have an update or a new post. And then the third way I love doing it is using messenger bots, uh, Facebook messenger bots to be specific. So things like mobile monkey, many chat, every time that you have a new blog post or update, you can send out a blast. The open rates are insane. The click rates are insane. It'll keep getting people to come back time and time again. And the last tip, and this one I experienced firsthand, make sure you have feet on the ground. Even Google, a digital company, did you know they do grassroots marketing campaigns? Like they had a bus go all around the United States helping businesses create their website. That's an example of a grassroots offline campaign. The reason that's important is people need to interact with you, your brand, your company. And if you just do online campaigns, they're not gonna really get that interaction. If people like Google, which is a digital company, have tested out and tried things like pop-up shops, they do things like have a bus go all around the United States and help small businesses, that tells you that traditional offline marketing still works. Don't forget to leverage it, it's powerful. Things like sending postcards in the mail. Yeah, back in the day it was really popular. Nowadays people are like, oh, I can't do well. well it's still effective. Hence, you still got all that junk mail. If it wasn't effective, people wouldn't keep sending that stuff to you time and time again. Now, if you need help growing your traffic, your revenue, check out my ad agency, Neil Patel Digital. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it, tell other people about it. Again, thank you.